Hello all, this is Sandeep Mandia, Assistant Professor, Department of PCE, Government Women's Engineering College, Ajmer. Welcome to first lecture on DIP Lab through Octave. In this lecture, we will discuss about how to install Octave and how to work with Octave software. Now, to start with, how to install Octave? So, you just need to open the browser. Once you open the browser, click uh, you Google search for the Octave browser. Just type Octave. So when you search for Octave, the first link, very first link you will get is CNU Octave. You need to open this. Then here you will get a download button. So you click on download and then you need to select the operating system which you are using. So windows is the operating system we generally use so here these are the links available for the windows operating system system to download octave now you can download the octave from any of these three links and install on your system installation of octave is as simple as installing any other software on the system now once you install it, then you will get these two icons on the desktop. When you click on GNU Octave GUI, then this kind of window will open on this. Now, let us discuss different windows available in the J Octave software. So, the first is the current directory. So current directory means in which folder, in which current folder we are working in that is that comes in the current directory and the file browser uh, window in this file browser window we will be able to see different files which are available in this directory then next comes is uh, the command window so in command window we execute the commands one by one now if if we we want to uh, execute some commands then we can type those commands in the command window and they will be executed and some uh, in in some simulations the result of the program of the script also is shown in the command window so let's uh, perform some operations in the command window so the first command i want to tell you is clc so clc is the command which will clear the command window so when i type clc and hit enter it will clear the command window so it has cleared the command window. Now, next is command history. So whatever uh, commands I use in the command window, they will appear in the command history. As the name uh, suggests, it is the history of the commands used. So here, these are the commands I have already used in the command window, which are appearing here. Then next comes is the workspace. Workspace is the window where all the variables which we have used will appear like if I use the variable a is equal to 3 semicolon then it appears a in the workspace then b is equal to 6 that b has appeared in the b has appeared in the workspace now all the variables which we have used will appear in the workspace now here you observe this difference that when we put a semicolon after a command then that variables value will not be displayed in the command window if we do not put a semicolon after the command then that variables value will be displayed in the command window so that's the difference between the semicolon and without putting a semicolon now say say c is equal to a plus b so in semicolon if i put c value will not be displayed there and c appears in the workspace so here it shows the class also its dimension also and its value all the things are shown in the workspace now if we want to clear the command window we have the command clc type clc and hit enter it will clear the command window then if we want to clear the variables available in the workspace then we have the command clear all so i type clear all so it is the command to clear the workspace now you observe that the workspace workspace variables will be cleared so when i hit this clear all this variables have disappeared from the workspace now again clc it will clear, clear the command window now 
now i will uh, tell you some of the commands which we use in the image processing so this is the current directory i want to change it the directory because the images on which i want to work are available in another folder so to go into that particular folder we can browse from here and we can go into that particular folder and we can select that folder otherwise what can be done is suppose this is a, a folder in which i want to work so i will open this folder i will click here so i will get the path i will copy this path and go to the octave and paste the path here right paste the path here and hit enter once i hit enter i will see that this folder has opened here and the content of this folder will appear in the file browser now i want to uh, perform some operations on the image which are available in this folder so uh, now you see the images we have discussed this that the images are represent as 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 an array so uh, that array will be stored into a variable so that variable is i say say that variable is i and the command in octave to read an image is i am read i am read and then inside the parenthesis i have to uh, write the file name so the file name is cameraman camera man right and i have to give the extension to extension is this is jpg type file so dot jpg and then this uh, parenthesis closes so uh, this you remember this needs to be given into uh, inverted commas and then i put a semicolon so you see this image is read and it is stored into the variable i so this is a matrix of 512 cross 512 dimension now its class is unsigned int that means the values which can which which are contained by this variable i are unsigned int type and the values of this variable are these now this is how we simply read an image now if i want to display the image then i have the command i am show inside the parenthesis i have to pass i as an argument so i am so and then the variable in which the image is available that we need to pass into as as an in, input argument so when i click on this i get this image so this is the camera image so this has been displayed as a figure window now if we want to perform the uh, cropping operation then you see these are the rows in the uh, in the image and these are the columns in the image now if i want to crop this portion of the image this portion of the image then you see the rows start from 1 to 512 here so half i want then it will be 256 here so 1 to 256 columns start from 1 to 512 here so 1 to 256 here so this portion will be selected this person will be selected and that i want to store into another variable that is say j so j is equal to i inside parenthesis i have to write first the rows which which, which i want to select so to select a range of row rows then we use the colon operator so one colon 256 it will select the rows starting from 1 to 256 then comma the second dimension is columns so again i will select 1 to 256 columns so this is 1 to 256 columns now that will be stored into the variable j and then i put semicolon press enter so j has been stored new variable we have got here j and its class type is unsigned int and it is 256 cross 256 in the dimension and its intensity values are these now if i display this i am show then it is j so you see only the portion of that image is shown so now if if i want to display both the images then what can be done is um, i have to use the uh, figure first so the the keyword figure will open a new figure window 
so first i will display the i so i am so i so it displays the original image then here again i type f i g u r e figure i am show and a so this will open another figure window and it shows the uh, cropped image which is available in j so now you see this is the original image which was available in i and this is the cropped image so here we can see that this is the the left top portion of the original image which is available here now if i want the comparison and that i need to do uh, in very precise way so if 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 i have to display both the images in the same figure window so for that we have subplot so we can use subplot this way subplot then we need to give number of rows and some number of columns in which we want to divide our figure window so we want one row and two columns so i want to divide my figure window into one row and two columns that means one image will be displayed here and another in the adjacent to that so that will be displayed and here we have to give at which position we want to display the image so at first position we will display what i am show i so it will display the image which is stored in variable i into the first position of the subplot so you see this this is the figure and this is divided into two uh, blocks here is the first and here is the second since we have not displayed anything in the second so it is showing a blank space now again i use subplot subplot and here one comma two comma at second position i want to display i am show j show j right now when i do this and i open the figure window now you see both the images are displayed in the same figure window same figure window so this is how we can display the images in the in, in the same figure window only so for that we use subplot so how do we use subplot we need to first divide the figure window into the rows and columns so i have taken only one row and two columns one row and two columns and in first position i have displayed the ith image and in second position i have displayed the image which is stored in the variable j now this is clc it will clear the command window clear all it will clear the workspace now now i will show you a script which is written to perform some operations on the image so to write the script what we need to do we need to uh, click the new script so let me just copy to save the time so i have already stored this so so what you need to do to run a script of the command just click here new script when you will click on this it will open as a, a as an of uh, blank editor window just you paste the uh, you type whatever uh, operations you want to perform or whatever commands you want to run in the um, octave that you can type here so i have typed these sequence of commands so here what what is written so let me save it first then we will discuss what are the commands so control s will save this and here we i will give the file name as demo since demo is already there demo one and its extension is already dot m is there so we need not to change it just say save so here you see the name will appear demo one so the first command we have used is clc so it will clear the command window then clear all clear all will clear the box space close all if before running to this script if some figure windows are open then close all operation will close those windows now next com coming to the next command we have i is equal to i am read cameraman.jpg so it will read the cameraman file then i am using subplot here so this is subplot 
2 comma 2 comma 1 that means uh, i am dividing figure window into two rows two rows two columns and at first position i am displaying the image i now i am going to crop this image so j is cropped in the same operation we have used here then i have displayed that image at the second position of that figure window so 2 comma 2 at second so i am so j then k i i cropped it, this image the original image into a different manner uh, i have cropped it into a different manner and that i have stored into variable k and that i have displayed into the third position of this subplot so you see two cross two means i will get four positions so at first position i have displayed the original image at second position i have displayed the cropped image at third position i i will display the differently cropped image that is i am show k that is available in variable k now if i want to perform the um, image negative operation so how do we perform the image negative operation we subtract the intensity values of the original image from 255 so if i do this 255 minus i it will subtract all the values of i from 255 and those values will be stored into the variable m so i will get the negative of i into variable m and that i will store at the fourth position of this figure window so subplot 2 comma 2 comma 4 i am show m so this will display this negative of this original image into the fourth position then i read another uh, image that is uh, stored in this uh, folder only that is demo2.jpg i read this into the variable n so n is equal to i am read demo2.jpg so it will read this image then i use figure here that means it will open another figure window and i divide that figure into window into two blocks so i have one row and two columns one row and two columns i at first position i display the original image so i am show n and then i perform log operation on this so this is the equation for the log operation now after performing log operation i will not get the output theta in the form unsigned unsigned int 8 in this form so to convert that variable into this form i have to use this function that is u int 8 P. so i will change its data type to u int 8 and i will store into p and then i display at the second position of this finger window i will display this uh, variable p which is there in variable p right so if i run this let's run this i have got first figure window i have got second figure window and now you can see so in first figure window what was there the cameraman image was there the cropped image was there and this is differently cropped means this this portion of this image is cropped this portion is cropped that's that you can uh, have the idea from this these pixel uh, ranges row and uh, column values now this is the negative of this image so this is the negative which is m so you can see the black has become white and white has become black in this so this is the negative of the image which is shown here and uh, this is the original image that is demo 2 and its uh, log transform transformed image is here so this we have uh, discussed in theory 2 so there also we have seen that it will uh, show us the uh, information which is embedded inside this area inside this region which is not clearly visible here right so this is all about this first lecture in which we can perform the operations now if if uh, if i have to uh, take another uh, file so again i have to click here i can go to the next file again i can start clc then clear all and close all clear all close all and we can start writing our code here and then we can run it okay thank you for watching this video and that's it for first introductory video on optic